Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today's video is really important, so make sure you watch till the end before you play the PC games on GameHub. I'm gonna walk you through the complete setup, show you the best settings for all processors, and explain how to get the smoothest performance possible. Also, quick note, sorry for not uploading for a while. I got a fake strike on one of my official sponsor videos, so I had to pause for a bit, but don't worry. I'm back now with daily emulation videos, and this one is all about the brand new GameHub version 5.1 update. Honestly, this is the best and most optimized update we've had so far. So let's begin the setup. First, open the GameHub emulator and log in with your Google account. It's completely safe, no issues at all. Once it opens, you'll land on the home page. From there, go into the My section and click on Import PC Games. Locate your game file and make sure you select the .exe file. Once you do that, the emulator will start installing all the important firmware and files it needs to run the game. After that process is finished, you'll be back on the home page, and this is where most people usually stop. But now we'll move into the advanced settings that actually boost performance and fix a lot of problems. Click on the three dots next to your game and open the settings. In the general settings, adjust your resolution based on your device. If you have a high-end device, set it to 1280 by 720. If you're on a lower-end device, go with 960 by 544. Scroll down a little and in the command line box, if you're running a DirectX 11 game, type dash DX11. This will improve performance and also fix common crashes. Everything else in this section is already optimized, so you can leave it as it is. Now let's move into compatibility settings. Normally the emulator sets these automatically, but if your game isn't running properly, here's what you should do. In the compatibility layer, select Proton 10.0 ARM 64X. For translation parameters, high-end devices should go with the extreme preset, while mid- and low-end devices should use the performance preset. For GPU drivers, Snapdragon users should always pick the latest turnip driver. If you're on MediaTek, Helio, or any other processor, stick with the system driver. Next is DXVK version. If you're on Snapdragon and playing a new game, choose the latest version, and for GTA 5 specifically, DXVK 2.3.1 works best. If you're on MediaTek or Mali, go with DXVK V1.11.1 Mali Fix. For VKD3D, which is used for DirectX 12 games, always set it to VKD3D Proton 2 Bind 14.1 no matter what processor you have. And finally, for the CPU translator, always pick the latest FX version. To make it easier, I'll be showing split-screen footage with Snapdragon settings on one side and MediaTek or Mali settings on the other, so you can pause and copy the correct setup for your device. Next, go to the Components section. Here you'll see a list of extra files you can install. If your game ever gives you a C++ error, install VC Redis 2022, and that will fix it. For GTA 5, I didn't need it, but it's useful to know. Then open the touchscreen settings. Enable input mapping if you're playing without a controller. If you want custom controls, click on Switch Touch Control Layout, hit Import, and load your control file. Once it shows up, just apply it and you're good to go. Now let's test GTA 5 performance. On the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the game runs at about 35 to 40 FPS in the open world. It feels smooth, missions load fine, and even though you'll notice small drops while driving through busy areas, overall the gameplay is very stable and definitely playable. On the Helio G99, the game unfortunately struggles at around 10 FPS. The good part is that there are no crashes or graphical glitches, everything loads correctly, but the low speed makes it very hard to enjoy. It shows that the emulator works, but the processor just isn't powerful enough for heavy games like GTA. GTA 5. On the Dimensity 8200, GTA 5 performs much better, running at around 30 FPS. The frame rate is consistent, there are no big drops or stutters, and missions play smoothly without issues. It's a very playable experience, especially compared to older mid-range chips. So as you can see, performance really depends on your processor, but the new update makes it stable and reliable across different devices. While you're in-game, press the back button to open quick settings. Here you can disable vibration or swap control layouts with one click. There's also a new option called Game Native Rendering with Auto, Disable, and Force Modes. I tested all of them and honestly didn't see any major performance improvement, but you might want to experiment and see if it makes a difference for your setup. Other than that, the features are pretty standard. So overall, the GameHub V5.1 update is a solid step forward. The emulator is smoother, more optimized, and more stable than before. With the right settings, you can enjoy big games like GTA 5 on mobile at playable FPS. That's it for today's video. If this helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be posting more emulation content daily. Drop a comment with your processor and how GTA 5 runs for you, and I'll see you in the next one.